All right, so let's get into the Word of God. So we're talking about overcoming emotional trauma and pain. And, you know, I started talking about this two years ago. I mean, two years ago, the Lord just really just opened me up and about talking about this. So let's turn, let's back up a little. And I'm going to read some fundamental scriptures. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 in verse 24 to 28. Now I read this last week. I'm going to read it this week because I want it to sink into your spirit. Matthew chapter 13 verse 24 to 28. I'm going to read three scriptures. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15. 3 John verse 2. 3 John verse 2. Maybe I should start from Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15. Maybe that's easier. So that, I mean... Matthew is a longer read. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15. And at some point, we'll need the microphone to move around just for us to be aware. It's kind of warm today. And um, I know we're starting our third service, but I'm also excited. Yes, we're starting third service from what I hear. You know, yeah, praise the Lord. Someone looked up us one. So when, yeah, and I, and I know that... Um, by this time next year, we will not be here. We'll be in a, in, a, in a bigger facility. Yeah, yeah. But it's a good, it's a good place to start from, you know, and uh, you know, and grow from. Hebrews chapter twelve in verse fifteen. Amen. Hebrews chapter twelve in verse fifteen. And I'm looking forward to coming more to Abuja. I'm looking forward. Yeah. <clears throat> Pastor Hansom has been asking me, George has been telling me how it was important for me to come. My schedule has not allowed it, but look at me here today. You know. I, I don't know if you believed when I said I was going to come. <laughs> because I said I've always wanted to come in the spirit. All right. So look at what the Bible says. <clears throat> Verse 15, Hebrews chapter 12. Looking diligently, lest any man fail. It says, let any man fail of the grace of God. So, it's possible that you have grace and you fail. He says, looking diligently, lest any man fail. So, the failure is not because grace is not available. It's because of something else. So, if there's an area in your life where you perceive that grace is available, then why am I failing in this area? This is what you have to pay attention to. He says, looking diligently, lest any man fail, of the grace of God. So I'll give you a practical example. So you're wondering that, uh, but sincerely, I, I think that when it comes to business growth, there's grace upon me. But in the last two months, I've just seen that that grace is not working. That grace has failed. He said, why does it fail? Look at what it says here. He, says, he, said, he said, why it fails is this. He says that, look into the gentleness, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness trouble you, thereby defile you. So the reason why people fail of grace is because a root of bitterness has grown and grace has been choked. So think of grace like a seed and a plant that is growing. So another root of bitterness grows. And when the Bible says a root of bitterness, what is what it means? Something happens on the outside that affects your heart. So sometimes it's a fact that um, you experience a disappointment. Sometimes it's a fact that you experience a delay. And that thing begins to affect the state of your heart. So the reason why it's important to really overcome emotional pain and trauma is because you don't want the state of your heart to disturb the flow of grace in your life. Glory to God. Glory to God. Third John verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish that thou mayest prosper and be in good health even as thy soul prosper. Very powerful scripture. Now, we've read it to talk about money, but that's really beyond money. See what it says. It's a beloved, I wish you prosper, prosper financially, and be in health, even as your soul prospers. That means that once your soul is not doing well, it will affect everything. And when you talk about emotional hurt and trauma, it takes place within the region of the soul. So what is trauma? What is trauma? I want to give you a simple example, a simple definition. Trauma is an emotional response that lasts long after an event that causes significant mental and physical pain and stress. What is trauma? Trauma is an emotional response that lasts long after an event that causes significant mental and physical pain and stress. 
I will say it again. Trauma is an emotional response that lasts long after an event or an incident that causes significant mental and mental and physical pain and stress. And I will give you what trauma looks like. And just to help you. When I was younger, um, we had my father's brother, my uncle. They didn't, live too, they, 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 live, they didn't live too far from us. Drive, maybe 20 minutes drive from our, from our house. So, because they were relative and I was young, it was a go-to place for me. It was a go-to place for me. You know, so when I have some time, I'll just tell my mother and I will get there, then come back and all of that. And, um, but my family is peculiar. I'm giving context because I remember some of you have never heard the story before. I've heard my story. But my family is peculiar. I don't, come out, I don't come from a nuclear family like you. My family is polygamous. I have three stepmoms. You know, I have three stepmoms, you know. And um, some of my step, my, my, my other, I mean, my, one of my stepmoms is Jamaican. Another one is another country. Then I have a Nigerian stepmom. So that's how we grew up. But the big challenge was this. My father was really international, you know. Praise God. I know, that, I know what you're thinking, so I wanted to say it for you. You know, you were just being kind and said, don't let us think that about pastor. But my father was quite international. So back to the story. So, but the challenge was this. This was a big challenge. Um, this is a story they told me. And, you know, sometimes every story has a reflection of what tells you. So the story was that we, we couldn't stay. My mom was the Nigerian. And they said that the reason why we could not really come together as a family, like my father thought, was that my Jamaican mom, by the time they wanted to bring us together, brought out a gun and said, I will kill everybody and kill myself and there will be no family. He said, it's worse enough to know that there are other people other, other elsewhere, but I moved to Nigeria just thinking it was me and my husband and my kids. So that's the way we lived, like, separated. You know, we're not divorced, but we just lived separated houses. And, uh, and, and because of that, you know, just what it means as a child when you don't have a father in the house. And the reason I'm saying so is that some of you, because you're not emotionally aware, you do not understand that certain things that you do is because of a dysfunction in your background. I'll give you a good example just to divert. I was doing some counseling, and this lady, maybe around 38, she broke down and said that, I don't know why. I said, she broke down and said, I don't know why. I said, why don't you know? He said, all the men that approach me that I get involved in are older married men. I said, okay, why do you think they approach you? So I asked him, don't you also find younger people attractive? And she looked at herself. I said, honestly, I don't find younger people attractive. He said, I find older people that are attractive. Then I said, well, well, I knew what it was. So I began to ask her, I'm like, you were never close to your father, right? He said, I wasn't close to my father. I said, but you wanted a relationship with him. He said, I wanted a relationship with him. He said, because I wanted his advice. I wanted his safety. I wanted his love. And I said, that's fine. I said, let me tell you what it seems to me. Now that you're of a marriageable age, I really think what's happening is that you're looking for your father and those men. And she broke down and started crying. He said, because for the first time, I can put it together. That the reason why I feel comfortable with them is that not just they are my sexual partners, but they actually act like my father and fill that gap within me. And most of the time when you see girls that grew up with their fathers, most of the time, not all the time, you will notice they have huge attraction to older men. And the reason why is that they are looking for something they miss in their childhood. They did not realize that what they are looking for is that they are looking for a father figure. And let me say something here, here. All of you that are single parents here, make sure that you expose, I know that you may be angry with the father, you may be angry with the mother of your child. But make sure that you balance it because as that child grows, it will look for that thing because that was how the child was created for a balanced relationship. So back to my story. So I'd gone to see my uncle, my cousins, you know, there. And when I got to see my cousins, my father and my stepmom made a surprise drive. They made a surprise drive to, they were doctors. So the, the way they was that it was a multiple floor house the basement and all of that were hospitals. Then they lived on the top floor. And so when my dad and my stepmom made a surprise, then all of a sudden there was panic. And what was the panic? The panic was that the way the family ran was that my stepmom could not see us. 
she could not like literally see us. There will be outrage. All of a sudden, my uncle and my my uncle and my aunt ran upstairs and said, "Oh, you are here. We have a big problem." You know, and they said that, well, the problem is that your dad is here with your stepmom. You know the drill. I said, what is the drill? He said, this is transport fare. Take, take bus and start going home. And, you know, the power, you know, when I shared this story with my cousins, my cousin says, but it was not that bad. And that's the thing about trauma. Trauma is not just about the incident. It's about how you interpret it. And that's why you may not agree with my emotions, but my emotions are true to me. you cry it's what is making me cry you may not agree with my emotions but my emotions are genuinely true i'm not making them up my emotions are true to me and let me say something if you want to help people one of the ways you can help people is to really let them know that though these emotions i do not understand them i respect them because they are the emotions that you genuinely have I remember I took the money that day. And, you know, the way I was raised, we didn't have a lot of public transportation at that age. I took the money that day and I refused to enter a bus. And it was like a one-hour trek to my house from their house. And I cried all the way. And the reason why I cried was this. I felt like a leper. That how can my father come and you throw me out? And in growing up, one of the things he did to me was that maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe there's something wrong with me. It was, that is a good case of trauma because something happened that left a big impression on my heart. If you read the Bible, I was going to show you the story of, in the, I was going to show you another story in the book of First Samuel about the sons of, the sons of David. Um, Amnon was the, was, the king's, was, the, was the king's oldest son and like the king Aparin, he had a stepsister called Tamar and a stepbrother called Absalom, told them belong to the same mother. And Amnon raped, Amnon raped Tamar. The Bible says, and for two years, Absalom never spoke to Tamar. Oh, wow, this is very powerful. But, but see, you know, when he raped Tamar, Amnon moved, um, Tamar moved and moved into Absalom's house. And the Bible says for two years, you know what happened? Absalom never spoke. Absalom never spoke about it. You know why? The Bible says, for Tamar, she was broken. She lost her self-esteem. And one rape incident has challenged that. You know what? Let me tell you something. Let me reverse. The worst thing you can tell people that are going through trauma and emotional pain is that, what is it? Get over it. That's the worst thing. Because you don't even know how it impacts them. And you must understand that we may be age made, but we don't have the same emotional strength and flexibility. And so, the fact that you can take something that the same thing emotionally because we have different emotional what strength so the bible says this that Amnon raped Tama and for two years Amnon um, Tama was living in, um, in Absalom's house then after two years Absalom created a plan and the plan was to kill David and kill Absalom and all the guys but it didn't work but Absalom eventually killed Amnon and you know what I want to say this. Some of you, you don't have direct trauma. Your trauma is a function of another person's problem. Because nothing happened to Absalom. It was a sister that was raped. Some of you, nothing happened to you. It was your parents' marriage that gave you trauma. And now that you are married, you begin to behave to your husband as though it's your father abusing your mother. This man you married is nothing like your father. But you are on the edge. You are on the edge. Anything, don't bring that thing. I know where you're going to. The man says, I'm not. You say, don't bring it here. Don't, if you serve me out, I serve you back. And the reason why you're saying that is because there's something that that reminds you of. In fact, some of you are in a relationship that sometimes you are not talking to your partner. You're talking to your ex. And because your ex, because, because the ex guy you dated cheated. And how did he cheat? He had a pattern of cheating. The same guy now called, oh, my car broke down. Uh-huh. Your car broke down. So you think, you, you think I'm an idiot. You think I'm a university year one girl. When you people say your car breaks down, you think I don't know what you're talking about. 
what you want to break up break up let's know and let's fix this thing once and for all and the reason why is that the reason why is that there's trauma there's something you're going through that you are it's making reference to and some of you let me tell you the truth you don't have relationship problem you are just projecting your ex and your ex pain into your current relationship glory to god and what you need to settle is this i'm sorry this happened but I'm not your ex. And that's why one of the most beautiful things you need to do for yourself when you want to date as a single person is to heal before you date. The reason why is that if you date as a damaged person, you will attract damaged people. And you will damage each other some more until you have collateral damage. <laughs> Glory to God. One of the challenges of not healing before you date is this. You will find damage and call it attractive. You will find damaged and call it what? Attractive. You will find broken and call it beautiful. And the reason why is that we choose from where we are. We what? We choose from where we are. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Someone, so, so someone, someone says this and says, you know, one lady said, one, one, I mean, this is a very painful incident. The lady broke down and said, I've heard everything you've said about trauma, about pain. But the question is that what was God looking at when I was raped? He said, why me? He said, why me? Why did all this? He said, I was raped. My sister was raped. And he began to tell me other things that happened. And I said to her, I said, what was God looking at? And I said to her, and watch this now. Many of you are here and wondering that, why all these terrible experiences in marriages? Why all these terrible experiences with friends? Am I the only one to have friends? Why the, am I the only one to have friends? Why am I, my friends betray me? People disappoint me. And you must realize this, that attack shows there's treasure there. People only throw stones at trees with fruits. The, did you hear what I said? People only throw stones at trees with fruit. The reason why you, are why you are attacked is because you are carrying something. If your future is not enviable, there will be no attack on your present. Someone say, how do I know that? Do you know every child that Satan tried to kill at birth was a child that had a supernatural destiny? E.g. Moses. All children were attacked at birth. At Moses' time. Only Moses was preserved. I'll give an example. Look at Jesus. The Bible says that there was a breakout of tears. But the reason why there was a breakout of tears was because the enemy, Pharaoh, sorry, the enemy, Herod, was looking for Jesus. The reason why you have been attacked and you went through that trauma and you went through a dysfunctional home and you went through the betrayal and things like this happen is because there's something about your future the devil cannot stand. So, what you should do is that don't be discouraged with fire. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So trauma is an emotional response. And it says that, beloved, I wish you, it says, beloved, I wish you prosper even as your soul prospers. So someone says, well, you know, you've said that, you've said that, you've said that um, um, God has something in mind. Boy, I, I'm, I'm, I'm traumatized right now. And if you're traumatized, this is what I say. You can't mend what you're not aware of. Stop running away from your trauma. Confront it. You can't mend what you're not aware of. You can't repair what you are not aware is broken. And the reason why is that one of the ways we deal with this thing is that some of us just completely shut down. And I explained this last week in the service. You should go back and watch it online. I said there's a, there's a term that is called frozen. It's emotional freezing. What is emotional freezing? Emotional freezing is that you just get into a state where you just, you are here but you've checked out of your body. And when people freeze, when you ask them what is wrong, they can't tell you either is right or left. They are not conscious of their feelings. When people are frozen, they will say, I love you. They say, what does that mean? The reason why they've trained themselves not to feel the sense.
I was sharing a story, you know, I was sharing a story about my personal abuse, how someone really abused me sexually. And someone said, when you were being abused sexually, you know, and it was a terrible story. I mean, just a terrible story. I never wish it happens to anyone. And the person that helped me was actually, this, it was someone that unlocked the story in me because this happened to me, but I never could describe it. And it was a story of, um, there was this, this lady spoke about how she was young and they were with, uh, they went on like a camp holiday with their family friends. And, um, and one of the guys locked the room and began to touch and kiss and all of those things. And she said, when he did that, he said, someone said, you do push him away. He said, I just froze. And it's emotional freezing where you are there, but you've checked out of your body. You are now looking at what is happening to you because you are seeing it, but you can't do anything about it. And she said this. He said, when I went downstairs to talk to my mom about what happened, he said, I was about to talk. The guy just walked into the room. And for the second time, I froze again and I checked out of my body. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of people that say they have no emotions, you are just on an emotional freeze. It's your coping mechanism to make sure people don't hurt you. There are things you don't want to remember, not because you don't know them. There are things that trigger you, not because you don't know them. But you're saying that if I don't feel, I will not cry. But the thing is that you cannot repair what you are not aware is broken. You cannot heal what you are not willing to expose. Glory to God. Glory to God. When people are frozen emotionally, you know things they say, I have no shame. There's no one that has no shame. That word, I have no shame. You know, we, <laughs> you know, you hear them say, you know, I, I have no shame. No, there's no one that has no shame. The reason why you say you have no shame is because at one point in your life you cared. And people use shame as a weapon to destroy your self-esteem. And the way you responded right now, you say, I have no shame. You have shame. That statement, I have no shame, is a coping mechanism. So why must I, so, so I say hallelujah. hallelujah? And the reason I'm saying that, you know, trauma is a silent killer. Trauma is slow poison. You will just see that it will, when you get married, then the trauma comes up. You know, I'll give an example. Um, have you seen someone that has a pain on their body, but you never knew? Then you just kind of slap them on the back. and they, Yeah! Why? It's not when you start and the pain got there, but as soon as that spot was touched, they were triggered. The reason I'm saying this to you, and this is a very powerful thing. The reason I'm saying to you that trauma is a silent killer. It will enter you and show up in your business. It will enter you, show up. It's when you want to date, it will show up. It will enter you, show up in your relationship, show up in your... They just look at, why am I like this? It's been there all along. I know of, I know of a lady that they brought up for counseling and the problem was sex. And the other one said, I don't, know why, I don't know why my wife doesn't like sex. So I asked her why she doesn't have sex. And she literally said, when my husband is, is like having sex, she just, she, she just goes. And I said, why? And she said, I don't know why. And I asked her, were you raped? And she broke down and started crying. And I said, the reason why you feel that way is this. Once you have trauma, you respond to every incident like the first incident of trauma. The reason why is that trauma stores in your body and stops your subconscious. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And that's how we must heal from it. That's how we must heal from it. That's how we must heal from it. And unfortunately, the church is not willing to talk about it. And that's why a lot of people that are single, you know, when you see guys that misbehave, sometimes they trauma issue. And when guys say they have no emotions, they have the most emotions. They bottle it up, and one day when you open it, it's an explosion. Boah! Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So, unhealed trauma can cause fear and anxiety. Yeah. Unhealed trauma can cause what? Fear and anxiety. Someone said, someone, someone, I, I asked someone, why are you afraid of falling in love? Because the guy is very successful, he's a guy, you know, a lot of people seem to like him, I want a relationship with him, but he's always dodging. And I said to him, Oga, why are you afraid of falling in love? Then he told me a story. He said, when I was in university, he said, I loved a girl, 
I could do anything for her. He said, I'm not that kind of person that is careless. I picked her. He said, but you know, my kind of university, they allow younger students to bring cars. He said, because I was not so rich, this girl broke up with me and follows on the hardy car. In my heart, I swore. He said, I swore. And he felt the pain. Unhealed trauma can cause fear. You just, you just be afraid of falling in love. And many of you are saying that, oh, I, I want to be married, oh, God, when, oh, God, when, oh. But deep down, you're afraid of falling in love. As soon as someone comes like this, it's as if armed robbers has come. And you're walking out, out of church, a guy says, hello, hello. <laughs> and the reason why is that because of your trauma, that was how the other guy came. And he took your number and broke your heart. And now this is what is going on here. Let me ask you, anybody, are you afraid of falling in love? So a lot of people that are afraid of falling, you know, you, you see, you see, you, you, even the answer you're getting is challenging. How do I know you're afraid of falling in love? How do I know you're afraid of falling in love? Because once the persons are talking, you think they're lying. The reason why is that you need to tell yourself something that will hurt you. Once the person is saying a lot of sweet things, you just make your heart rock solid stone because you don't want to feel you you are afraid of feeling you are afraid of what you become when you start feeling something you are afraid of yourself falling in love you feel pity for yourself to fall in love and i want to ask you a question you not addressing your fear of falling in love does it grow or it diminishes it grows because you are now nursing your fears Someone says, how do I deal with it? The first thing you want to do is this. Don't cover your fear. You know, that's the thing. Don't cover your fear. You know, let me tell you something. When people want to cover their fear, they say all sorts. You know, they say also like, ah, you, know, you know, don't cover your fear. Don't cover your fear. Expose your fear. Identify the root cause. Go back and say, why do I feel this way? There was, a, there was something that happened that made you feel this way. Someone betrayed you. Okay, what? Well, identify your fear. Ask yourself, what am I afraid of? Because sometimes you may need to learn something. Is there something you're afraid of? So how do you do with trauma? Number one, you need to you need to uncover. Don't max. You know, someone says, you know, I'm a guy. You know, I'm a guy. You know, I'm, I'm a strong babe. Listen to me. I know you're saying you're a strong babe, but I know that you're weak on the inside. You are like coconut, hard on the outside, soft on the inside. In fact, what I've discovered in my years of pastoring, the hardest people are the softest. You just have to get through this boundary they put there. Once you get to the crack like a pack of dominoes. But they are putting up that front because... They are afraid of something. And I'm saying to you, see, you don't run away from fear. If you run away from fear, your fear becomes bigger. What do you do? You confront your fear and your fear begins to shrink. The second thing is that if you say, I'm, I'm so scared of falling in love. The second I want to ask you is that, and this is very powerful for you. This is very powerful. Oh, thank you, Lord. Ask yourself, why, do, why am I afraid? What do I believe? And you're telling me, Okay, I believe that this person will hurt me. Then ask yourself, this thing I believe, is it true? Why? I believe this, but is this thing I believe, is it true? The fact that someone hurts me doesn't mean every woman would hurt me. The fact that one woman left me for a richer man doesn't mean for a richer woman, does, for a richer man doesn't mean every woman will leave me. Because the challenge with trauma is that it makes one thing like a permanent state, and that's not true. I'm going to say the second thing, and I'm going to roll the microphone over. Glory to God. I said 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 glory to God. One of the things that trauma also does to people is this. You know, trauma makes people's hearts cold. It makes their heart hard. Makes their heart 
dry and non-vulnerable. One of the things that drama does is makes people's heart cold, makes their heart hard, makes their heart cold, and makes them non-vulnerable. And someone will say, someone will say something like this: uh, wh wh Why do I find it hard to show emotions? The reason why you find it hard to show emotions is that something that's happened to you that told you that showing emotion is not a good thing. Because nobody, ev listen, have you ever seen any child that is shy before? Have you ever seen any baby that is born shy? Have you ever seen any baby that wants to cry and can't cry and say, I'm shy? No, we learnt, we learnt it as we grew up. These things that say, I don't, someone says, well, what, I, why don't you show emotions? I don't show emotions because that's not the way I am. But when you were a child, you showed emotions. When you were hungry, you cried. You were, you were shy. When, when, when a small girl came and you were a guy, you ran into the room and put on your pants and say, oh, don't see my pinky there. You did all of those things as a child. What happened to you? As you grew up and life happened to you, what happened is that something broke it. And now you've learned about life that is not what it's showing your emotions. So you've told yourself over time, I will never be vulnerable. When people are not vulnerable, you know the things they say? They say, I don't need anybody. I don't need anyone. Some they say, I, I don't need anyone. That, that's what they say. I, I don't need anybody in my life. I'm, I'm bulletproof. Nothing can affect me affect me. I don't allow people get closer. No one can hurt me. These are the things people say. say no one can hurt me. I don't allow people get closer. I keep my feelings to myself because I'm my be I'm myself's best friend. I keep my feelings to myself because I'm my myself's best friend. Others' emotions don't affect me. No one can hurt me. And when you say those things, the reason why you tell those, those things is because you are teaching yourself over and over and over that I don't want to be vulnerable. But when you see people that are not vulnerable, the reason why they're not vulnerable is because at some point in their life, they were vulnerable, they exposed their emotions, they wanted some help, and someone, instead of helping them, took advantage of them and crushed it. But you must remember, the fact that it happened once doesn't mean it's a lifetime thing. Glory to God. And let me say this quickly. All of you that are running from emotion. True courage lies in vulnerability. To know that, let me tell you, it's, it's easy to run away from vulnerability. Very easy. I keep to myself. Courage is vulnerability. To know I can share me with you. And I know that you can destroy me. But I have the courage to believe. I have the courage to trust. That me being with you will not be destructive. It will be empowering. That's vulnerability. And that takes courage. And that takes courage. Why do people, why are people, why are people not vulnerable? The reason why is that they just put a box. I've been hurt before. They put a box. They put a box. Don't hurt me. So everybody, so when they go to the office, they have office behavior and they relate with you from that glass. When they come home, they have home behavior. When they, they have this behavior, they don't want to come close because they are afraid that if you see me the way I am, I can be really ashamed. If you see me the way I am, I may not be able to handle what you see. You may not be able to handle exactly what you see. And if you want to break out of this, you need to remind yourself. Vulnerability helps me to manage people's disappointments, but I also get to live with the regret of isolation and not experiencing genuine love. One of the biggest feelings you can have in your life is to know that someone truly loves you. But for you to experience that, you must choose to be vulnerable. And let me close with this. Someone says, well, I'm going through a lot of things. I'm going through a lot of pain. The moment you can give your pain a purpose and meaning, it will lose its terrible grip over you. How do I know that? I'll give an example. And this is very good. When I was younger, university, some guys were going for a party. This guy was meant to join them. When he dressed up, they looked at him and said, oh, is this what you're going to wear? And he didn't have anything better. So they said they would not take him in the party car. It was a car. And they went. 
And he stayed in the hostel and cried and said, ah, because my parents don't have. See what they did to me. He felt disappointed. He felt rejected. He felt pained. Guess what? The next morning we heard, those guys on Todd Midland had an accident and everybody died. All of a sudden, he said, ah, what I thought was preserving me from unlikely death, from on time, what I thought was disappointment, was God preventing me from what untimely death. You know, I'm saying this to you. I know you've been through pain, but once your pain has meaning, it will lose, once your pain has purpose rather, it will lose its impact on you. Because you will discover that this did not just work against me, this worked for me. You will discover this does not just work against me, this worked for me. The guy in retrospect said, ah, last night I was crying and thought I had been rejected. And this is what the Bible says. He says, if they had known, they would have not crucified the king of glory. He said the reason why they crucified him was because he will come back again. I said to you last week, and this is what I said. I said, there are two perspectives. You are either buried or you are planted. What's the difference? I hope you know that when you are buried, you are in the soil. When you are planted, you are in the soil. The difference between buried and planted is this. Once you are buried, that's your end. Once you are planted, you are in the same oil. But there's hope of resurrection. That I will come back again. So when I think through the things that have caused me pain and trauma, I think about it that I'm not buried and planted. I will resurrect back in a better form. Praise God. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not buried, I'm planted. It looks as if I'm buried, but the truth is I what? I'm planted. Praise God. And it's about time to close. I, 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 do I have a microphone? I want someone to ask me a question, share me their own story, tell me something that happened to you, something you're dealing with, and I will be able to do that for the next five minutes. Glory to God. Some, yep. Who has the microphone? Yep. Yep. Okay, let's move. Can I, can I start with this lady? This lady? Yeah. Yeah, tell me. This lady on the third row. Yeah, tell me the story. You're looking back. Yeah, you. Yeah. Tell me. There's a lady on the third row here. Yeah. Don't worry, I'm here. I'm here for you. God sent me to you. So, yeah. Take. <laughs> tell me. You can sit down. You don't have to stand up. Hi. Um, I, I grew up with my mom. And as a child, she's a single mom, so she had... Um, lots of anger that I had to live with. So sometimes when I do something wrong, <laughs> she easily says, I gave birth to you so I can kill you. <laughs> and I think I just grew up with that mindset thinking, <laughs> My life was soon end, so I never took anything serious. <laughs> Cause I was just waiting for the time I'll die. <laughs> Not school. <laughs> I'm actually good at a lot of things, but I just do them for a while and let it go because I feel it's not going to last for long. I might soon die. <laughs> How has that affected you right now? <laughs> just <laughs> take your time <laughs> I I'm just I'm just starting to leave. <laughs> Are just starting to leave? Yeah. So you have wasted a lot of years of your life. You didn't think you were what much. You, you didn't think you were what much. No. Be 
because of the verbal abuse you went through. What's your name? Joyce. Joyce. Can I help? Can I, is he okay? What do you have? So because your mother was very tough, I can tell that you're very tough. I am. Yeah? So you're the kind of person that you never give up on a dream if you make up your mind. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, so? Pain is like a coin. It has bad side and good side. The reason you are crying is that you've thought about how you felt worthless because of what he said. Look at it and say, if my mother was not that tough, I would not be that strong today. Maybe if my mother was not that tough, I would not be that prayerful today. Because sometimes when we re experience rejection from home, we run to Christ. And what I wanted to do is that you can't change the past. But what is the purpose? God used those pain to produce this kind of strength in me. And you must remind yourself, I'm not buried. I'm only planted. Thank you. So, so let, me, let me ask you two or three questions. Tell me three things growing up in that situation gave to you that your friends don't have. Like what it, three gifts it gave to you, maybe three qualities that when, when you, you tell your friends you don't have it. Yeah. <laughs> One, you told me that you're very strong willed. You yeah. pursue things. Yeah, tell me. I can tell you something else. Which is the fact that you've learned to take care of yourself from very early in life. True or false? True. So when you see your friends that can't take care of themselves, how do you feel? <laughs> I'm always trying to show them how they can be strong. So one of the things that happened to you is that you grew early. And that's an advantage. You know, the people your age and cannot think at your level. But because you had to survive, you grew early. And that's a gift. It didn't come in the perfect way, but it's one of the gifts that came because of your, of your pain. Thank you. Praise God. Okay, let me take two. One more. Maybe somewhere over there. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. I, can, I can't really get to see. Pastor, so can you? But I don't want to kick up with her. Yeah. Want to give someone? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for today. Okay, uh, when I was a teenager, I decided to do. I decided to do music, and the person teaching me music abused me. Mm. So now that I'm grown, I feel like I made was not opening up. I decided to stop singing. And it took me nine years. And I said, okay, let's come back and do music again. And the person now that was supposed to manage me, who we went for this program, when we came back, I don't know, he gave me a wine to drink and I slept off. When I woke up, it happened again. And, okay, that has actually made me scared you should be and i always get angry what, what, why, why do you get angry especially to men whenever a man speaks to me the way i don't like like talks to me and it just provokes this anger in me mm. and now i'm scared because i'll soon be getting married my fiance is a very good man okay. when i prayed okay when I prayed for somebody to get married to, I said, Why are you nervous right her. now? <laughs> I'm scared because he's here. <laughs> but he knows this already. He knows. First of all, if you have a man that knows this and stays with you, you have an amazing man. <laughs> Hold on, don't clap yet. Don't clap yet. If he knows this and he stays with you, is he that stupid? Or is amazing. Stupid because he doesn't know what it means to stay with you. Amazing because he knows what it means to stay with you. And he has chosen to stay with you. What's your name, ma'am? Divine. 
I'm divine. So why you? So what pain do you feel right now? I, I feel this. Me always getting angry. I don't want to hurt him because he's a good man. I feel I'm a good person, but I don't know. Oh. So divine, this is what I will say to you. I think two things are important here. Number one, when air is compressed in a place, it's look for outlets. That sounds like trauma. If you don't give trauma an outlet by healing, it will come out, and it will come out at times you don't want it to come out. And that's exactly what happened to you. And that's why you get angry, because, because you're angry. That's what it is. You're angry. And you deserve to be angry, because how does someone go through this experience twice? And it's not angry. You're angry because you thought you were stupid. The first time, maybe you couldn't control it. The second time, you felt as if you were stupid. Is that why you're angry? You're angry with yourself. Yes, so the first thing you have to do, can you forgive yourself? I'm trying. So why is it hard for you to forgive yourself? I feel I should have been more careful. I agree with you, you should have been more careful. But Divine, what can you do about the past? Nothing. Did you get pregnant? Did you have a child for the process? No, sir. What about if you had a child? What would they have said? I'm only saying to you that it could have gotten worse. I know it was something terrible that happened, but every terrible thing has a dimension to get worse. It could have gotten worse. Don't you think you could have gotten pregnant? Or you could have had a baby, at least? Yes, sir. So why is it difficult to forgive yourself right now, since you can't change the past? When are you going to forgive yourself? I want to. That's why I'm standing up. What is it? I want to forgive myself. I want to heal. You want to heal? Yes, no, sir. before you heal, you have to forgive yourself. So forgiveness is a choice, not a feeling. Tap your chest and say, today. Today. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. I let go of all the anger I have against me. I let go of all the anger I have against me. I let go of all the resentments. I let go of all the resentments. All the criticisms. All the criticisms. I have against me. I have against me. And I forgive myself. And I forgive myself. That's it. Let me say something to you. Let me tell you why it's important to forgive yourself. If you don't do that, you notice two people that were going up in music did the same thing? Yes, sir. One of the challenges with trauma is that if you don't treat it, you can create a, a cycle where you attract the same thing over and over and over again. And that's why some of you, you keep dating the same guy with different names. So you think it's Tunde, Chukudi, Vince, or Simeon. You know, whatever it is, it's just the same name. It's just the same name. It's the same guy you're dating. Because, because you are damaged. Damage looks attractive to you. And that's why you have to forgive yourself because that's how you heal. If you don't heal, you will keep attracting men to partner with in your business that way. And they will keep doing the same thing. But when you heal, you start attracting whole people because you're healed. You attract who you are. Yes, sir. Praise God. Hallelujah. And now my time is up. Can we stand on our feet?